Hey, what's going on, New Life Chapel? Welcome to New Life Chapel Online, our online campus. Yep. We absolutely love it here. And we love that you are here with us today. My name is Eric. This is Mandy, and again, super excited that you're checking it out and that you're part of yes. New Life Chapel today. Yes, and if you can't tell behind us, it is snowy and cold, yes. and we are freezing, but we are so glad that you're with us. Yes, and we're in the building. We are. We, we are, are in, in the building. building. I know, super That's our view. Stuff. Check that out. That's awesome. <laughs> Hopefully it won't always be that white and cold, but... Listen, if this is your first time with us, we want to meet you. We want to know that you're yes. here. So you can text us to 513-848-8655, and you're just going to text NEW NLC. Yep. Super easy. Yep. That way somebody on our team can reach out, and we yep. can introduce ourselves and get to know you. That's right. We want to know that you're here. There's something else, too. We want to make sure that you know about New Life Chapel. We believe in the power of prayer. Amen, yes. And we believe that it is just such an important part of our faith journey, an important part of church yeah for right sure. so and no matter what it is it could be something that you want to praise god for something you'd like our team and our prayer group to be praying for you can also text that same number i'll say it again 513-848-8655 yeah. and you can text pray and i'll see you remember our team will reach out we'd love to know what's on your heart yeah. what's going on that we can be praying yeah, absolutely. And listen, we also want to remind you that you can give online as well. It's super simple, yep. super easy. Yep. I'm like stumbling over my words. I'm so excited about what we're going to talk about today. But listen, it's super simple, super easy. All the information is going to be at the bottom of the screen. You can just do whatever yep. is works for you. You yep. guys can go to our website. You can text. You can send a check-in, whatever you want to do. But I want you to know that by giving to New Life Chapel, I don't... I don't even know if I have the words to tell you the impact that you're making here in Westchester, here at New Life, and all around the world, right. literally. Yeah, incredible things have yeah. been going on uh, just over this past year, even especially. Just yep. seeing, seeing some amazing things that uh, happen in, in our community and around the world. And really all that happens because of generosity. So thank yeah, you so much. Sure. Again, newlifechapel.net, you can get more information there. But I am so jacked about next weekend. <laughs> I feel like for we so many have reasons. been waiting for it. It is all morning. Super Sunday. It is super next Sunday. Next weekend, February 13th. And I mean, it couldn't be any better. One, yep. New Life Chapel, our first time, first Sunday in the building. Together. Come on. Together in Let's the go. building. We yes. also got baptisms going on. Yes. It is going to be amazing. Listen, if you are ready to take that step, so you've given your life to Christ, yep. you want to tell the world and make it public, baptism is the next step for you. We'd love to have you participate. Yeah, super. In that. Listen, just you just email us info at newlifechapel.net. We'll reach out, we'll get you connected, we will get you signed up for baptism. And hey, even if you don't sign up, show up. Yeah. We will have everything that you need here in our building, yeah. again, for the baptism. Now listen, we yes. don't call it Super Sunday for nothing. It is going to be super. We got some crazy stuff planned here uh, in the building. It's the Bengals. Like, yeah, come on, who did? <laughs> I don't nope. know if we really have wrapped our mind around this. Super Sunday here, 8655 Cincinnati Grace. Bay Grace. Road. And it's the Bengals. Yes, it cannot it get any better than that. Yeah, it's gonna be so good. Yes. I'm, I cannot wait. All right, today, we're gonna jump into yep. our service. We got a great word from Pastor Lonnie. Today we yep. got some worship. So no matter where you are, again, thank you so much for being part of New Life Chapel Online. It's gonna be a great Sunday. Yep. It's gonna be a great week and it's gonna be an awesome super Sunday. Amen. Again, thank you for being here. <laughs> Love it that you're here. Good morning, New Life. We just want to welcome you all online today. And just join in with us. We're going to teach you a little new song this morning. We're so excited about this. So jump in with us and sing right where you're at. I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your God. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for me. Yes, I do. Oh, God, my
are the same God. You answer prayers back, and you will answer. You are the same God. You are the same God. You were providing. You are Hey, good morning, New Life. We're so glad that you guys are able to join us online today. I just want to quickly remind you just of a couple things in preparation for the Super Bowl Sunday. We're going to be having church right here, and it's going to be unbelievable. I mean, how about it? The Cincinnati Bengals are in the Super Bowl, and we're going to come and celebrate Super Bowl Sunday together. It's going to be an event like no other. It's going to be incredible, so don't miss it on Super Bowl Sunday. And invite people, man. Let's pack this place out. It's going to be our first time in the building gathering together for worship and for singing, and it's going to be an incredible day, so don't miss it. And also, too, if you've never been biblically baptized, we're going to do baptism service here on Super Sunday. And so if you've never been baptized and you want to get baptized, make sure that you write something in the comment section, reach out to info at newlifechapel.net, go on our app, sign up for baptisms. We already got a ton of people that are signing up. But we'd love for you to participate as well. So today, as we gather in this place, and we gather wherever you are, I just want you to think about this thought. How many of y'all know the feeling of a good, slow burn? You know that slow burn that happens when your wife asks you to hold up a picture so she can put it in the right place, and after about a minute where she can't figure out where it ought to be and the section it ought to be in and whether it's level or not, your shoulders start to burn like crazy from the inside out, or maybe you're putting up a lamp, you're putting up a light, 
maybe you are uh, holding a kid, you're holding a diaper bag, and at first you're like, this isn't bad, this isn't tough, you know, and then after a while, man, that, that 10-pound kid all of a sudden feels like it's 100 pounds on your arm, your arm is burning like crazy, your muscles are on fire, I mean, it's just a slow burn. I was thinking about how our lives a lot of times, that there's some things in our lives that we're carrying that at first don't feel like it's a big deal, but over time, it hurts. That at first you feel like it's, this is not that big of an issue, but the longer I seem to carry it, the longer I seem to try to hold on to it, that actually the pain gets greater and greater. I was reading an article this week, and it talked about how this generation, that of all the generations, that this generation has the highest percentage of people who deal with low-grade depression. Now, I'm not talking about clinical depression I'm talking about just that thing within us that just things seem to be just off. Like you don't, you would say in your life, you're saying, I don't think I see anything wrong, but I just, things don't seem to be right. That there's some things in my life where I used to have hope and now I don't have any hope. I used to have joy and now that joy is just kind of gone. I used to have purpose and vision or maybe I had passion and excitement for life and Yet over time, what ends up happening is we kind of lose that. And I will just say this just real quickly. That's what I love about this church, is it's okay not to be okay. And it's okay to be in a place where you are honest and transparent about what it is you're facing and what you're going through. I love this church because we actually have some incredible Christian counselors that are in this church. That if you're going through something that is bigger than you even realize, just know this, that we're here to support you, we're here to help you, we're here to get you connected to the right people because we don't feel like you should carry what you're carrying alone. And that's why we're here as a church. But this idea and this thought that a lot of us, when it comes to our souls, that we have this, what if you want to call it a heavy soul. The psalmist writes in Psalm 42, he talks about, he says several times in this passage, so whenever you study scripture, whenever you look at scripture, he says multiple times in verse 5, for example, he says, why my soul are you so downcast? In verse 11, he says, why, my soul, are you so downcast? In verse, chapter 43 and verse 5, it says, why, my soul, are you so downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? That the psalmist wrote in Psalms 42 and 43, he talks about how at one time he had this joy and this excitement that he actually couldn't wait to get to the house of God. He couldn't wait to be around the people of God. He couldn't wait to sing and to worship. And, and he says in Psalms 42, he, he talks about how my tears have been my food day and night, that now that I find myself isolated, I find myself alone, I find myself disconnected, I find myself looking within my life, and he says to himself, why, why all of a sudden was I so excited about life, but now why is my soul so disturbed? Why am I so disappointed? Why, am I, why is life so uneasy? Why, why am I so upset about things in my life? Why am I so worried? Why am I so anxious? Why is my soul so heavy? Why am I so worried and disturbed? Why soul? And it's interesting when you think about this. I think that there's a couple reasons why. I think one, a lot of us, we carry heavy hurts from our past. I think because of things we've gone through, because of things we've done, or maybe things people have done to us, that we carry some hurts from our past. That, it, that again, at one time, we didn't think it was a big deal, but the longer we hold on to it, the longer... We think about it, the longer we meditate on it, the longer we rehearse our hurts, that it starts to hurt even greater. Jeremiah, the prophet, wrote, in a, he wrote a book entitled Lamentations, and he was just lamenting about his life. And he says in Lamentations chapter 3, he says, I remember my affliction. I remember my wandering. I remember the bitterness and the gall, and I remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. See, I wonder how many of us that the reason we can't seem to find joy is because of we remember our hurts from our past. And again, some of us, we feel like maybe it's just things we've done. You know, we said something, we reacted, we acted in a way that we have guilt, we have regret. We're like David and Psalm 51 when after the decisions and choices he made in his personal life, he looked at his life and he's like, man, I've lost the joy of my salvation. And I think it was choices and decisions sometimes we make that we carry the weight of our past. And then other times, maybe it was stuff that was done to us. 
Maybe it was a friend that had betrayed us and a spouse or a coworker or a boss or something that happened to us. We didn't choose it, but it happened to us. And so now we carry the hurt, the heaviness of the hurt from our past and we're carrying it with us into our today. It's interesting that your present heaviness is oftentimes connected to a, your past hurt. The other thing I think that why we are so heavy is because we're heavy with trouble in our present. Job, who when he went through everything he went through in his life, and it literally within a matter of days, he had family struggle and trials, and he had job and career, and his life literally was falling apart around him. Job chapter 4 and verse 5 says, But now trouble comes to you, and you are discouraged. It strikes you, and you're dismayed. Now trouble comes, and it strikes you. It feels like that, that punch in the gut. That when you look at your life now, you're like, this is not what I had planned. This is not what I had thought. And you look at your life, and you're just simply discouraged. You're frustrated. You're dismayed. You can't even believe you're in the place that you're in. And you look around and circumstances and situations or maybe it's seasons the transition of seasons brings about discouragement and disappointment we thought our life was going to look a certain way and now it's not playing out to be that way so we go through a midlife crisis or maybe we have transitions in our children and our family and in a career and and we go through and it feels like we, we didn't plan for this and we feel dismayed and discouraged on the inside of us and so we're carrying the heaviness of of we thought in our minds of this ideal picture of the way our life was going to be. And that picture is not what we intended it to be. And so we carry the heaviness of the troubles of our today. And then even the heaviness of anxiety about our future. We start wondering about the future. We start thinking about the future. And we think about how bad it's going to be. And how are we going to pay the bills? And how are we going to raise these kids? And how are we going to, you know, the diapers? And how are we going to, the house and the car and the college and how are we going to take care of and how I mean what if I lose my job and what if somebody gets sick and what if this thing doesn't turn around and what if this thing doesn't become right again and and we start playing the future out and and we're so anxious about the future and we're so worried about the future and and at one time we used to be able to sleep at night and now we can't sleep at night because we play out over and over again in our minds and our hearts our past and our present and our, even our future anxieties and I was thinking about when Jesus, even in this moment, when Jesus, the night before he went to the cross, the Bible says that he went to a place called the Garden of Gethsemane. And while he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he took his closest with him, Peter, James, and John, the disciples were there with him. And he says that he went off with Peter, James, and John. And in that place, he realized that, that what was to come, what was happening the next day was he was going to hang on a cross and he was going to take on the sins of mankind. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 14 and verse 33, it says, He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. Verse 34, he says, My soul is overwhelmed. My soul's overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And he says, So you guys stay here, you keep watching, you pray. And what Jesus did is the Bible says, He went off with the heaviness of soul, and he went before God and he prayed, and he prayed the, the Father of if there's any other way, remove this cup from me, but not my will, but your will. And the Bible talks about how there was great anguish in his prayer. And when he was crying out to the Father above, the Bible says that he was like sweating as if they were great drops of blood. I mean, there was so much turmoil because he knew what was to come. He knew what was ahead of him. He knew what was before him. And the Bible says that Jesus even said he was deeply distressed and troubled. And so I want to say to you in this moment, I just feel like in this moment, just to say to you, Listen, I know you've been through past hurts, and I know that you have the heaviness and the troubles of today, and I know some of you are anxious about your tomorrows, and that we live in a world that is broken, we live in a world that is hurting, and, and we live in a world where a lot of times things happen to us, and we don't know how to respond and react, and so we carry that with us, and I just want to say to you today that it's okay. But you don't have to keep carrying it alone. That you actually, the, when the Bible says, when the psalmist says, my soul, why are you so downcast? That he actually gives us hope. That he actually gives us a way 
that we can find the joy again, that we can find peace again, that we can find the passion again to life, that we can actually cast our burdens and lay them down and we can pick up joy and victory and love and excitement and anticipation once again. You know, um, a couple, about a year ago, man, I was having this, uh, I got my, my right shoulder in particular, I was having all this pain in my right shoulder. And whenever I would uh, work out in particular or, or whatever, I would, it was interesting because whenever I would lift my right shoulder, I always called it, it was like a, it was like a dead arm. Like my left arm was fine, my right arm was like, when I would bench or when I would lift or whatever it is, my left arm could do so much more than my right arm. And so I was working out with a, a friend of mine, Dr. Baker, okay, Dr. Patrick Baker, he's a chiropractor. And one day we were talking and he said, Lonnie, are you all right? And I said, man, I don't know what's wrong with my right arm. Like, it, like it, there's times it aches, it hurts, it, when I lift it's a dead arm, when I, it would all, it would, every once in a while it would just basically go to sleep on me at different times. And, and so he was looking at it and he said, well, why don't you come into the, to my chiropractor? And I was like, Doc, whatever. I said, it's cool. I'm good. I'll just work through it because, you know, that's just what we do. We just kind of press on. And he said, no. He goes, why don't you come in and see me in my, in my office? And, and he goes, I, I'm telling you, I can help you. And so I was making up all these excuses. And eventually I said to him, I said, Doc, you know what I sound like? I said, I sound like people, when I talk to people at church, that they make up all these excuses, <laughs> that I feel like I'm making up all these same excuses to you, why I don't want to come find healing and help, you know what I mean? And so I started laughing about it, and I said, okay, doc, I'm in, I'll, I'll be good. Well, so I went, to, I went to Dr. Baker's office, and I was like, you know, I had all these thoughts, like going to a chiropractor, never been, what's it going to be like, what's going to happen, you know, I don't know if this thing's really going to work. And I went in reluctantly, and I'm going to be honest with you, when I first went, it was pretty uncomfortable because there was so much discomfort in my neck. There was so much discomfort in my shoulder. And I remember talking to him a couple days while we were working out. And I said, Doc, man, it just, you know, I'm just still, it's, it's uncomfortable. I'm just not responding. And he, he looked at me and he said this. He goes, Lonnie, so I got this pastor friend. And he always tells me, just trust the process. Just trust the process. And I'd like, all right, Doc, I'll trust the process. And so I'll be honest with you, for the first month, every time I'd go see him, it was uncomfortable. There was some discomfort. And yet what happened was all of a sudden, the pain in about the matter of three months completely went away. And at the end of three months, he said, when you trust the process, what will happen is at the end of three months, he goes, what will happen is the pain will go away and your strength will begin to come back. And you know what happened? I trusted the process. I went in. It was a little uncomfortable, but over time, what I actually found was healing. What I actually found was I got stronger. What I actually found was that all of a sudden that the pain that I felt is no longer there. And what I want to tell you today is this, that if you'll trust God's process in this, that you too can be healed. That you too, and I know that there's going to be times, I'm not saying it's always going to be easy. I'm not saying that what you're going through that there's not going to be discomfort. I'm not saying that you're not going to be discouraged. I'm not saying that there aren't going to be times where you're going to wonder if this is actually working. But if you'll trust God's process, that actually you don't have to keep carrying the pain that you're in, that you don't have to keep carrying the hurt that you're in, you don't have to keep going through all the anxiety and the worry and the despair and the discouragement that you're in or the dismay that you're in, whatever it is that you're going through, you don't have to keep carrying that, that actually in this passage, God gives us a way that we can be healed and we can be made whole again. Psalms 42 and verse 5 says, So why, my soul, are you so downcast? Why are you so disturbed within you? Put your hope in God, for yet I will praise him, my Savior and my God. See, you know what I love? I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. You know what he did? He preached to himself. You know what he said? He said, my soul, why are you so downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? But then he stops and he, the, there's a transition. The transition is, he says, but I'm going to put my hope in God. Put your hope in God. I got to preach to myself and tell myself to put your hope in God. And I got to tell myself to praise him, my God and my Savior. See, if you want to find encouragement for your soul, can I just tell you, you got to preach to yourself. 
you got to start writing your best sermons in the darkest days. you got to start writing your best sermons in difficult times and discouraging times. you got to get in the Word and say, God, give me a Word that I can preach to myself so I can put hope back in hopeless situations, that I can find joy in joyless situations, that I can find my passion again in these situations where I feel like I can't even wake up in the morning and I don't feel like I can get throughout the day, that there's times where I just got to say, God, help me to preach to myself. And he says, so put your hope back in God. So here's, what, here's three things. I want you to tell your soul. Number one, say this, remember God's faithfulness in the past. Tell your soul to remember God's faithfulness in the past. When you are being tempted to look at the the pain of your past, look at the the provision of God in your past. When you're tempted to look at the hurt from your past, no, 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 I'm not going to, I'm not going to see the hurt. I'm going to see the healing in my past. I love, again, Jeremiah writes in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. He says, I remember my afflictions, the wandering, remember that verse, the bitterness and the gall, I remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Verse 21, ready? Here's the shift. Here's where everything begins to shift. Verse 21, yet this I call to my mind, therefore I have hope. I call to my mind and I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And I say to myself, he's preaching to himself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait on him. I call to my mind and I say to myself, I call to my mind, I say to myself, I have a choice what I think about, and I'm choosing not to think on my pain, I'm not choosing to think on my guilt and my regret, I'm choosing to think on God's mercies that are new every single day, I'm choosing to think on God's grace, I'm choosing to think on God's provision, I'm choosing to think on how God has worked, I'm choosing to think on how God showed up, I'm choosing to think about, if you're a Christian, I'm choosing to think on the day that I got saved. That on that day that I said yes to Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of my life, that in that moment he took all my guilt, he took all my regrets, he took the burden of my sins, and he cast them away. And I walk with no shame, no guilt, and no regret anymore because I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb. I choose to think about, I choose to call to mind, I choose to preach to myself God's provision. Those times in my life where I didn't know how it was going to unfold, I didn't know what it was going to work out, I didn't know if we were ever going to make it through, and yet every single time God showed up and God provided exactly what I needed when I needed. I can't tell you what the last two years have been like pastoring a church have been absolutely crazy. I can't tell you what the last two months have been like pastoring a church have been absolutely crazy. Where there's times where I've wondered where are we going to meet? When are we going to meet? How are we going to meet? What place are we going to meet in? How are we going to pull this off? And yet every single time God showed up in the nick of time at the right time and God provided a way. So all I got to do is I got to remember and recall and I got to preach to myself provision of God. I got to preach to myself the promises of God. I got to get in the word of God. If I'm going through something, I got to find the promises that God has for me in the word. And I'm going to preach to myself the promises of God. I'm going to remind myself those times where I didn't know what to do, how to do it how to respond, how to react. I didn't know what was going to take place, but yet I found myself in the Word of God, and God gave me a particular word, that rhema, that promise that He'd given me. I'm going to sing songs in those times, those times, come on, those times where it's been difficult and challenging, and yet I've shown up to church, and a song that was sang is exactly the word that I needed to hear. I'm going to remind myself of times where I've shown up to church, and I didn't really want to be there, but when I walked in, Someone said hello, someone gave me a hug, someone gave me a high five, someone gave me a a word, someone encouraged me, someone prayed for me, I heard a sermon, and it was exactly what I needed when I needed. When you look throughout the Old Testament, you actually find that the, the, the names of God often have come under times where God provided in a way. And so in that moment, it was... Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is my provider, because that's what God did in that moment as he provided. The, the Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals because I needed healing and God healed me. Jehovah Ra, which is the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Psalm 23 passage that all of a sudden it's in those moments you start to identify who God is in that moment. So in those moments, you got to recall to your mind, you got to remember, and you got to preach to yourself how God has provided. And also, too, number two, cry out to God in your now. Try out to God in this present time. Cry out to God in this moment. Psalms 142 says, I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out before him my complaints. Before him, I tell him 
my troubles. I encourage you, just talk to God. Just share with God what you're going through. Share with God the now situation. Be honest with God. God's not surprised. God knows exactly what's going on. God knows what's happening in your life. Mary and Martha, when their brother Lazarus was sick, the Bible says that they, they reached out to Jesus and said, Jesus, come, the one you love is sick. And Jesus delayed his going to Lazarus. Then the Bible says the word got back to Jesus that said Lazarus had died. And then Jesus decided to go. Well, Jesus needed to go a couple days before, but he decided to go now. And then when he shows up, you know what Mary and Martha did? The Bible says they run out to Jesus and Martha's like, Jesus, if you would have just been here. Do you all understand what she's doing? She's complaining to Jesus about her situation. And you know what's interesting? Jesus didn't berate her. Jesus didn't say, who do you think you're talking to? You know what Jesus' response was? Jesus' response was, did I not tell you if you believe you'd see the glory of God? That's all he said. You know what that tells me? That there's times in my life that I can complain to God and God doesn't get mad at me, but that God will give me a word in that season. See, you can cry out to God in your now time. I remember times back in my life where I felt, in particular, there was a season where I was hurt by a close friend. And I can remember looking back on that time and I carried, I carried that with me for years. And I remember reading about Joseph, where his brothers had sold him off into slavery and circumstances and situations. But whenever you read Joseph's life, all throughout his life, whether it was in the pit or whether it was in the palace or it was in a prison, the whole time the Bible said this, and God was with him. And God was with him. And then it came to a point where Joseph now found himself in a place where the ones who had betrayed him were now in front of him. And Joseph, without bitterness, without resentment, said, it wasn't you who sent me here, but it was God. And it was for the saving of many people. That actually, that what happened to me, God had a much bigger picture than what I had in store. That God had a bigger plan and God had a bigger purpose. And I was going to trust him. And in that moment, I just turned it over to God. And I said, God, all the bitterness, all the resentment, all the frustration, the disappointments, how I thought it was supposed to play out, what I thought it was going to be like, God, I give that over to you. And I want your will, your way, your plan, your purpose, and the peace of God. I'm telling you, when the Philippians 4 says to pray, 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 pray. And you go before God and you lay your request before him and you do it with thanksgiving and you lay your heartache and your hurts before him. The Bible says that what transcends, Philippians 4, 8, says that what happens is the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And in that moment, a complete and total peace that only comes from God came into my soul that can come into your soul today. If you will just, in this moment, if you'll just trust him through the process. And then lastly, write this down. Trust in God's power for your, pu for your future. Second Chronicles, the Bible tells us that a guy by the name of uh, Hezekiah, the king Hezekiah, was in a situation where he was surrounded by the Assyrians. And all of a sudden in that moment, they didn't know what to do. And the Bible says that King Hezekiah stood up in front of his people and said this, Be strong and be courageous. Don't be afraid and you don't be discouraged. Because of the king of Assyria and the vast army that is with him. For there is a great power. There is a greater power that is with us than with him. See, with him, listen to this, is only the arm of the flesh. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. You know what he's saying? They have what they have, but we got God. They have what they have on their hand, but we have God on our side. See, we have the alpha and the omega. We got the beginning and the end. We got the provider. We got the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We got the one who is a bigger than all time. I mean, we have God, the creator, God of the universe. We have the one who sits high on the throne above it all. We have him on our side, the one who has a, more than a cattle of a thousand hills. I mean, that's what the, we have that God on our side. He is our provider. He's our sustainer. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's our savior. 
Savior. He was our Savior then. He's our Savior now. He was a deliverer then. He's a deliverer now. He has a mighty strong hand. He's the one who fights for us. And I just have to trust that my God, my God is that powerful, that good, that great, and that he has the best is yet to come for us. And I'm going to trust him in the process. So why, my soul, are you so downcast? Because Romans 8, 28 says that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and be called according to your purpose. And I'm not saying that in life that we don't get disappointed, but it's in those times of disappointment I'm going to preach to myself. I'm not saying in life you're not going to be dismayed and you're not going to feel like you all of a sudden you got punched in the stomach. But in those moments, i got a choice. I'm going to preach to myself. And I'm going to preach to myself that you're the same God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. And you're my healer, you're my sustainer, you're my deliverer, you're my rock, my salvation. You're the joy of my salvation. You are the one who shows up at the right time every time. And I'm going to keep putting my hope and my trust and my faith in you. Psalm 33, and I end with this. We wait and hope for the Lord. He is our help and he is our shield. In him our hearts rejoice. For we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord even as we put our hope in you. I want you just to bow your heads right where you are. Was an area in your life that you need to put your hope in God? I mean, only, you can only answer this. An area where you're trying to hold on, that you're trying to control, maybe a hurt from your past, maybe a circumstance in the now, and maybe you're trying to control even the future. What is an area that you just right now, you just need to say, God, I'm turning this over to you. I'm I'm not going to carry this thing anymore. That's why I love when Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary, and I'll give you rest. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your care upon me, for I care for you. That it's in that moment that there's a transfer. You give him the heaviness, and he gives you peace. You give him discouragement. He gives you courage. You give him your pain, he'll give you his power. But you have to be willing to let it go and trust him through the process. I want to pray for you. Father, it's in the name of Jesus. I pray for every single person that is watching right now. Lord, you know exactly what they're facing. You know what they're going through. You know what they're dealing with. Lord, I pray that you would meet them right where they are. God, I pray for healing in their heart, hurts of their past. I pray right now that your, as your word says, that you come to bind up the brokenhearted. I pray right now, Lord, that you would bind their hearts up. God, people right now that are in a now situation, there's a lot, they're just discouraged. God, I pray that you would just speak into their mind and their heart. Give them a word, give them a promise. Give them something they need right now. And God, for those who are anxious about the future, God, help them to put their hope and their trust in you, to trust in the Lord with all their heart, lean not on their own understanding, and all their ways acknowledge you and let you direct their path, that you guide the steps of the righteous, and we trust you through the process, because we know the best is still to come. And we thank you for your word. We thank you for worship. We thank you for this church. God, we thank you for Jesus. And we thank you for new life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen.